Righto. <clears throat> the purpose of this video is to describe the anatomy of the main deep tendon reflexes of the upper limb. I'm not going to teach you how to test them on somebody, but we are going to talk about the peripheral nerve that's involved in each, the spinal level, um, upper motor neurons, lower motor neurons, how those reflexes might change in different types of injuries and that sort of thing, okay? The anatomy describes what and why you're testing what and stuff. We've talked about um, the anatomy of a reflex. So what we're doing is, we're talking, the, the main reflexes we're gonna talk about are the biceps, tendon, triceps, tendon, brachial radialis, tendon. We tap the tendon, but what we're really testing, we're, we're, we're testing, that these are muscle stretch reflexes rather than tendon, deep tendon reflexes, but they get called deep tendon reflexes or myotatic reflexes. So what we do is we've got a muscle, we tap the tendon to rapidly stretch the muscle, the stretch receptors send sensory innovation back through nerves to the spinal cord and then there's a, a short reflex arc that then sends motor innovation to the muscle to tell it to contract. It's a protective mechanism and a posture mechanism and that sort of thing. Uh, but what we can use it for clinically is if we test to see if that reflex arc is functioning, we can test to see if the peripheral nerve is functioning and we can test to see if the reflex within that spinal level is working and whether the inhibitory neurons from higher levels are able to have an effect upon that reflex. What am I talking about? So if we have a muscle, when we think about the innovation of a muscle, we think about the motor innovation, but we also have sensory fibers running from that muscle. So we talk about these as afferent and efferent neurons, bundles of neurons, these long axons um, extending between the target organ and in our case, the spinal cord. So afferent fibers, are carrying sensory information back to the spinal cord and then motor efferent fibers are carrying uh, motor innovation back to the muscle and these are, they tend to be carried by the same nerve they're carried by these major nerves of the upper limb there are four major nerves of the upper limb um, and the ones that we're going to care about today are radial and uh, muscular cutaneous so when you test a tendon reflex, so here's the biceps muscle, here's its tendon, it's got an interesting tendon, story for another day. Um, what you do is you put your, you know, the person is nice and relaxed, muscles relaxed, you put your thumb on the tendon, tap with a tendon hammer, even though I told you I wasn't going to tell you how to do this. You tap with a tendon hammer and you watch the muscle. And with that tap, the muscle should reflexively contract and shorten a little way. So you should see that muscle react and you might see flexion of the elbow, a little flexion as a result. And the trick with this, so they tell me, is that um, it's very subjective. You need to do this a lot. You need to practice it. You need to get used to feel what that normal reflex is like. Because when, it, when it's absent, that's pretty easy to identify. But if it's brisk, if it's faster, if it's more powerful than normal, you need to be able to recognize that because you're used to looking at normal tendon reflexes. Okay, Sam, stop waffling on, I just want the basics. Right, okay. Um, the nerve that innervates the muscles of the anterior compartment of the, of the arm, that is the bit between the elbow and the glenohumeral joint, um, is the muscular cutaneous nerve. So if you, if you perform that action and you get a normal reflex, then the musculocutaneous nerve is able to carry the sensory information back to the spinal cord. It goes into the spinal cord through the dorsal part and then it triggers the motor neurons to come out of the ventral horn and then go back out to the muscle. So if that reflex works normally, then you know that the peripheral nerve is intact and functioning and all of these little bits are intact and functioning. And this little bit in here is intact and functioning. And essentially that reflex arc acts independently of the higher levels because it's a reflex. It doesn't need higher levels to function. 
However, what we've described here is the neurons coming out of the ventral horn and going to the muscle. These are the lower motor neurons. They are within the peripheral nerve. They're within the musculocutaneous nerve in here. There are upper motor neurons that pass from the higher centers of the brain down the spinal cord, and you would use those to use your higher level to choose to contract these muscles. However, in the terms of a reflex, the upper motor neurons running from the cerebral cortex down through the brain and the brainstem and the spinal cord, they can have an effect on the reflex arc. And what they do is they dampen it. So if the spinal cord superior to this level has been injured, so if the upper motor neuron has been injured at some point, it will no longer be able to dampen that reflex arc. And as a result, when you do a tendon reflex examination, you may find that that reflex is brisk. It's more powerful than usual. And that means that the upper motor neuron is damaged. If the tendon reflex is absent, then it means that the peripheral nerve running from the spinal cord and into the upper limb, that nerve has been damaged, either the sensory part or the motor part. If it's the motor part, then that would be the lower motor neuron. But what we're, what we're talking about here is, if the, if the reflex is absent, then the peripheral nerve could be damaged. All oh, that level of the spinal cord could be obliterated, right? Because if the reflex arc is... Got, anyway, you get the idea. That's the point. The next idea that's important is that when we're forming a peripheral nerve of the upper limb, we form that nerve, say one of these nerves, from multiple collections of neurons from multiple spinal levels. So, uh, this is the brachial plexus. You can see a number of roots, collections of neurons coming out of the cervical spinal cord at different levels and coming together to form parts of the brachial plexus running through that motorway spaghetti junction and coming out the other end as the median nerve, the ulnar nerve, the radial nerve, the musculocutaneous nerve and so on, right? Um, which means that when we're testing um, a muscle stretch reflex, we might be testing the function of the peripheral nerve, but that peripheral nerve comes from multiple spinal cord levels, which means that we're testing multiple spinal cord levels for their function but we tend to say that each reflex has a stronger link to one level than the others, right? So what are we, what are we, what are we testing? Well, this is the bit you read in the textbooks. Biceps brachii is innervated by the musculocutaneous nerve. So when you test the brachi when you test the muscle stretch reflex or deep tendon reflex or myotatic reflex of the biceps brachii muscle, you're testing the function of the musculocutaneous nerve and you're testing uh, spinal cord levels C5 and C6, okay? Now this muscle here, your beer drinker's muscle, this is brachioradialis. It runs from the humerus and it has a long tendon running here. It doesn't quite run as far as the wrist. This runs to the radius. There's your radial pulse there, right? So. This muscle is involved in elbow flexion. You can see it there, most prominently when you are partially pronated. And you would test this reflex by tapping the tendon along here somewhere. Now brachioradialis, when you tap that, you're testing the radial nerve. So the radial nerve is going to innervate brachioradialis. Uh, so you're testing the integrity of the radial nerve and you're testing the spinal cord level C6 predominantly. Other levels are involved in making the nerve fibers that get to this muscle, but you are predominantly testing the C6 level, all right? And then we go back here. So the muscle on the posterior arm that extends the elbow is triceps. Its tendon runs to this is the olecranon, this bony bit here. So the tendon runs to the olecranon. So again, you can tap this tendon 
to, te to test the muscle stretch or myotatic or deep tendon reflex of triceps brachii. And again, you, you look for that muscle to contract with a tap. Or... The triceps muscle is also innervated by the radial nerve. And when you're testing the reflex of the triceps muscle, you're largely testing spinal cord level C7, so the seventh cervical level. It gets fibers from C6, C7 and C8, but it's largely C7, which means that when you test these reflexes, biceps C5, brachioradialis C6, triceps C7, that's it, that's the bit you really needed, right? So go and find these tendons on yourself. You'll need to contract the muscle a little bit so that you can find them. And remember that the upper motor neuron is inside the central nervous system and can dampen a reflex. The lower motor neuron is in the peripheral nerve coming out of the spinal cord and going to the muscle. And when we're testing a reflex, we're testing that peripheral nerve and the spinal cord level and potentially the upper motor neurons that are passing down to that level. If the reflex is absent, if it doesn't occur at all, then the peripheral nerve is damaged if the reflex is more powerful than normal, then the upper motor neuron may be damaged. So the anatomy helps you understand what you're testing, and then remember C5, C6, C7.